Hello, Tamal, and welcome to the Business Standard Banking Show. Uh, let us start by discussing what is being called the biggest merger in the history of India, the HDFC Bank. Can you put in context for us, what does it mean for HDFC and overall, how big is this? Well, it's really big. It's really big. Trust you me. I mean, not in terms of assets, because if you look at State Bank of India's merger, its consolidation and the consolidation of the entire State Bank of India group, or what we have seen engineered by the government in the public sector banking, uh, now we have a lesser number of banks. So in terms of size, asset size, loan book, probably it's not, um, not the biggest one. But when it comes to the market capitalization in terms of market value, uh, this is the biggest ever merger in Indian banking. And this merger actually has catapulted uh, HDFC Bank into a big league. It's uh, now fourth. It will be the combined entity will be uh, probably the fourth largest valued in terms of market cap. Um, in the global banking order. Uh, so uh, that's one part of it. Other part is this, uh, why is this merger and why it took so long actually, if you ask me why not, why it could have been done even earlier. Uh, historically or traditionally, uh, investors have been looking for it. And every time the response, standard response of HDF is this, look, this merger doesn't make any sense because of the regulatory cost. Because as you know, we have the regulatory requirement like SLR in the form of bond buying, CRR, keeping money with the um, Reserve Bank of India on which a bank does not uh, earn any interest. And the so-called priority sector lending, 40% of your uh, loan have to go to the priority sector. So these are the issues HDF is saying, look, uh, this is not done. I mean, the cost is too high. And what was the arrangement early this century done? HDFC bank were selling uh, home loan on behalf of HDFC. And there's sort of kind of internal fee sharing arrangement. But on its books, there are not too much of home loan. So that was one, actually, you can say that gap in the product range of HDFC. So everybody wanted this merger to happen. Otherwise, also structurally, if you see, HDFC is an HFC or NBFC which is holding, was holding 21% stake in HDFC Bank. And HDFC Bank in turn holds 100% in another uh, non-banking finance company. Uh, so this is a structurally very odd in Indian banking system. So it has to be, uh, and now this anomaly has been addressed. We've talked about the HDFC merger, but can you put in context, uh, what are the kind of mergers we've seen in the financial uh, sector? What do they mean uh, for uh, the financial sector specifically? The primary uh, premise behind most of the merger in Indian banking system is to save a bank. Because since economic liberalization, there is not a single bank has been allowed to fail. Now, let's talk about the latest merger that we have seen. I mean, before HDFC, the PMC, which is not even a, uh, which is a, which is a cooperative bank, you know. Now, PMC, even PMC was not allowed to pay. Him. I mean, because there were a lot of public money was involved. And now we have got it, it's turned into Unity SFB, small finance bank. So whenever there had been a problem, our regulator, Reserve Bank of India, actually plays the matchmaker from behind the scene. Like, say, uh, before that happened, Lakshmi Vilas Bank. Lakshmi Vilas Bank was taken over by DBS. Now, the first case where a foreign bank was allowed to take over a new uh, a, a local bank. Of course, DBS is not exactly foreign because DBS is one of the two locally incorporated foreign banks. So most of the merger, and let's talk about the early this century uh, when this Global Trust Bank was falling, the OBC, Oriental Bank of Commerce, were persuaded by Reserve Bank of India to take it over. So all the merger, because Reserve Bank of India does not want depositors to lose money. Reserve Bank of India does not encourage any bank, to, does, not, does not allow any bank to fail. Uh, so this is the history of merger. And if you look at like HDFC and HDFC Bank kind of merger happened also, like ICICI, the parent, reverse merge with ICICI Bank, or IDBI, the parent, got reverse merge with IDBI Bank. But then the story was different. ICICI was suffering from sort of asset liability mismatch. I'm talking about ICICI, the, um, the uh, financial institution, not the bank I'm talking about, the development financial institution. Because the, the, the so-called chief funds which the government used to give, the government stopped it post-liberalization. And ICICI, the development financial institution, was finding it difficult to survive. So then it got merged with ICICI Bank. 
we've discussed the whole issue of the health of uh, the banks many times in this show we've recently had the uh, fsr report by rbi what is your read of it this financial sector stability report which comes in june and december it's a six month health check by the reserve bank of india health check of the financial system or the indian banking system now typically it's very conservative if you see in the past it had already always said that npas will go up etc etc but this time if you look at the financial stability report it's pretty gung ho uh, well our net np of the system is 3.9% last time we had this kind of level is 2011 one paragraph i was going through somewhere tucked away within reserve bank of india and it talks about no the the stress in the unsecured loan unsecured retail loan it says about that uh, people's inability to pay off typically you and me when we take loan our installment comes in 30 days if we don't pay in 30 days then it becomes a sort of special mention account from 30 days to 60 days 60 days to 90 days and beyond 90 days it becomes an npa so people i think 7.4% of the loans uh of 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 the of the borrowers are not been able to pay within 30 days that's what it says so there's some incipient stress happening and if you that's about the number of borrowers 7.4% if i'm not mistaken and i think if you talk about the loan size about 10% of the unsecured retail loan people are not borrowers not been able to pay within the 30 days period so that's a little worry i say uh, there could be slippages so i think we should not just you know uh, celebrate we need to be banks need to be careful important uh, word of caution there that banks have to be watchful of the npa situation and the whole uh, issue that has been flagged by uh, rbi about the unsecured loans uh, but thanks for putting in perspective the uh, whole issue of the hdfc merger and uh, the mergers in the financial sector as a whole as well Thanks the man for joining us. We will see you next week. If you like this video, share it and subscribe to Business Standard. For more news, views and insights, log on to www.business-standard.com. Do also follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Telegram and LinkedIn. I am the blue of the limitless sky. I am the inspiration success so high i will achieve i will fly high i am the eye in sbi i'm back by the nation's trusted bank sbi the bank of to every indian